Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope everyone's having a wonderful start to their work week. Just wanted to do a quick video today. I wanted to talk about something that happened to me over the weekend. So I went to a card show on Sunday with some of my friends. Uh, I'll show you what I got in a minute, but there was a situation where I kind of got, talked myself out of a purchase that now I'm thinking about in hindsight, I really should have executed on. So I'm not going to list the card specifically or even the deal or anything like that. Just, you know, out of respect to the peoples that were involved kind of in the transaction. So I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea about anybody that I was working with. But, you know, I, there was an individual who was selling cards, obviously, at the show. It was pretty packed um, because the way it was kind of set up was in smaller rooms because a lot of the bigger rooms they had at this convention center that's in a hotel were booked. Uh, they were booked with other activities that were going on that day. So we got put into a smaller room, so that things were really tight in trying to fit all the people that were selling cards in there and all the patrons that were coming in. Um, so I, I was approached this one dealer who was selling a lot of modern cards, but had a couple vintage cards that were in there, and one that was ungraded. Uh, it was ungraded in a really good condition. It was of a Hall of Fame player that I, you know, really really like, and it's a player I would love to get more cards of his of. So. You know, that was that was kind of, for me, the thing that first brought me into it. You know, the card was in nice condition. I didn't have it. It was a Hall of Famer I really wanted. Um, so what stopped me? You know, the, the price actually was, wasn't really the issue. Um, for me, I talked myself out of it, really, because I was worried about, because the price was so good, whether it was authentic or not. Um, but, you know, I got a second opinion on it from one of my friends. I even was able to bring another card from that set that I wasn't all that personally familiar with. I knew what it was, but I didn't have a lot of cards in that sweat to, set to be able to even do a comparison on. And I was able to borrow one from another dealer that I was talking with about too, about this uh, item. And he, he said it seemed to think B would, would be authentic, even though he hadn't seen it himself. Um, and I just, even when I look at them side by side, you know, they looked close enough together. And maybe the only differences I was seeing maybe on the back with the yellowing was just a difference in aging and not a difference in cardstock. I just really got cold feet at the end of the day. And I think that that feeling of like kind of getting hyper fixated on one purchase uh, it led to kind of disappointment when I didn't actually execute on it after the fact, even though I, I thought at the time maybe I was making a good decision. Uh, but I think I just wanted to kind of highlight to see, like, have other people had that experience? Because uh, when that happened, I was just totally taken out of my game, if you will. So I wasn't even really, really going around the show looking at other cards and seeing what other purchases I might be able to pick up. I didn't go in there with a specific plan other than, like, looking for one particular card, which I did find, just not at a price I was willing to pay just yet. So if it's there next month and I haven't been able to get it, I might do it. Uh, but I was really thrown off. And if that guy, I see that dealer again at the next card show. I just want to go up to him like, hey, I'm sorry. I was just so all over the place last time. I hope you still have that card because uh, I'd like to be able to make a deal on it. Um, but it, it's likely that it didn't last the show. And, you know, the next one's going to be in a month and it probably isn't going to be there anyway. Um, but I, I kind of wonder, like, how did other people have that kind of experience too, where you kind of talked yourself out an item that you kind of later regretted because you were looking for every reason under the sun. And even when you're able to get people's, other people's opinions, you just, because you were so anxious, I think about it, and I think that's what I was experiencing, I just had a hard time hearing what people were saying. It's not that I didn't believe them. I just had a hard time hearing what they were saying because I was think I was so anxious about the purchase myself. And it, it, again, if it was graded, I think that would have been the difference, but there was a time where I wouldn't have worried if it was graded or not. I think the reliance on grading also, I think, played a role for me, even though I think that's an important part of the hobby, and especially when you're buying vintage cards. Um, but it definitely talked me out, I think, of picking up an item I think I would have really loved to show. All right, so I'm going to do something real quick and just show you the cards I picked up. I don't know what they did picked up, even though I don't have the 1970 set put together. Um, my Reggie Jackson's not in great condition, and this guy had this one at a, at a steal. Um, had it at a price that was meant to go. I guess they'd send it into PSA and it maybe came back as trimmed or something like that. So it's in, it's in really nice shape. It's just kind of off center. It's possible it may have been trimmed. It looked like it was the same size of every other 1970 Tops card I own. Um, so it's one I'll think for now I'm going to put in the set, but I may even be willing to kind of send it off to SGC because I know they'll at least give me an authentic on there. And I, I was looking at some of the prices on authentic cards and it seemed like it would be a nice one to add into the hobby. But for now, 
and I'm just gonna upgrade my 1970 set with that. And I think it's something you'll probably see me doing more in the near future is just upgrading some of my sets from the 70s. And then finally, I did, uh, towards the end of the show, I did pick up an autograph of a White Sox player. Um, got Luke Appling, a guy I didn't have an autograph from and a guy that signed a lot because he lived into the early 90s. So it's a great Hall of Fame player for the White Sox. They can easily get an autograph for that played in the parts of the 30s, 40s, and even in 1950. And you can't say that about too many White Sox players that year where you're going to be able to easily get some of their autographs. And especially not someone that, at least on my list, as you saw, was the number two best player in White Sox history and once was voted the best player in White Sox history um, well before, obviously, Frank Thomas uh, joined the team. Um, so that's it for tonight. Again, thank you for everybody. I look forward to seeing some people's comments. Thank you for watching all the videos recently in my White Sox series. I really appreciate all the comments and support. I'll probably do maybe something similar again in the future. Uh, maybe not for White Sox players, but maybe another team that I collect, such as the St. Louis Cardinals, once I have some of the great Cardinal players. I'm still missing a few, but um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a wonderful evening and have a great week.